In the early 2000s, America entered a devastating period in its history, commonly referred to as the opioid crisis or the opioid epidemic. There was a new type of painkiller that hit the market called oxycodone. Oxycodone was pushed hard by pharmaceutical companies under the guise of giving doctors a tool to help mitigate pain in patients. The problem was that oxycodone was incredibly addictive. And as patients became hooked on it, higher and higher doses were needed for them to manage their pain and their feelings of well-being. And higher doses were also needed to keep devastating withdrawal symptoms at bay. During the first decade and a half of the opioid epidemic, hundreds of thousands of Americans died from opioid use. And while advocacy groups and watchdog groups have successfully sought court action to hold pharmaceutical companies responsible for their false advertising and negligence with respect to oxycodone, other more deadly opioid drugs like fentanyl have started to rise to prominence. As of the recording of this video, an estimated 3 million Americans are currently addicted to opioids. That's roughly one in every 110 people, and upwards of 100,000 people die each year due to fentanyl use. In this video series, we'll look at the biochemistry of addiction, and we'll explore what it is about our evolved neurobiology that makes opioids so devastatingly addictive. A common misconception about people with an opioid addiction is that it's a behavioral problem, and that those people are simply unwilling to change their habits. But it's a lot more complicated than that. People with addictions have experienced biochemical changes related to how their brains manufacture and regulate molecules like dopamine, which we all produce in our brains. Now, dopamine isn't an opioid but its levels go up when our brains process opioid molecules. And that includes natural opioid molecules that our bodies and brains make as part of our regular day-to-day -day activities and synthetic pharmaceutical opioids. Now, dopamine is fascinating. Uh, to explore how it relates to addiction, let's take a quick detour. First things first, what is dopamine? Well, dopamine is just a molecule. It looks like this. Okay, then what does dopamine do? Dopamine is part of a class of molecules known as neurotransmitters. Our nervous system is made up of specialized cells called neurons. Neurons receive a signal at one of those branched ends called a dendrite arm, and then transmit that signal out the other side of the neuron, which we call an axon. Neurotransmitter is just a fancy name for the molecules that are secreted by the axon end of a neuron and then subsequently received by a dendrite arm of a neighboring neuron. That's the main way that our nervous system sends signals around our bodies from one neuron to the next through the continual sending and receiving of neurotransmitter molecules like dopamine. Sometimes dopamine is referred to as the feel-good molecule which sort of suggests that it helps to heighten positive feelings. But more accurately, we might say that some of the clusters of neurons associated with dopamine are involved in motivating us towards certain behavioral outcomes. So when you feel like you just have to eat some ice cream or you have to buy a certain new pair of shoes or, or when you're playing that game on your phone and you have to get to that next level, those feelings and sensations are generated by the neurons that secrete dopamine. That overpowering urge to engage in one of these behaviors, in my examples, that's just a result of those dopamine-associated neurons not being fully activated. And when you get to eat that ice cream, or buy those shoes, or play that game, or watch that TikTok, a pulse of dopamine is released by the axons in the relevant neurons. Those dopamine molecules then travel to the dendrites of neighboring neurons, which then send messages of their own, and those neurons then send messages of their own, and on, and on, and on, and that subsequent sequence of firing neurons in your brain results in a feeling of relief and satisfaction. Okay, let's get back on track. 
perhaps you can see now why dopamine is associated with addiction. It's a neurotransmitter molecule that's part of our motivational system. Adding gasoline to the metaphorical fire, dopamine also plays a role in mitigating pain. Unusually high levels of dopamine can lead to feelings of euphoria. Unusually low levels of dopamine can lead to dysphoria. When someone takes synthetic pharmaceutical opioids over prolonged periods of time, it changes the amount of dopamine that's needed for normal pain relief. And it changes the amount of dopamine needed for neurobiological reward responses. In short, a person becomes unable to produce an adequate amount of dopamine needed for regular functioning. That person becomes dopamine deficient at levels of dopamine that they're able to naturally produce. If the dopamine deficiency is related to a constant influx of synthetic opioids that help to maintain a certain dopamine level, then cutting off that external supply of dopamine can have a devastating impact on a biochemical and neurological level. That person can experience intense withdrawal symptoms like nausea and shakiness and crippling muscle pains and unmanageable anxiety. For someone who has an opioid addiction, clinically known as an opioid use disorder, it can take years of treatment for the brain to recover and for that person to be able to function symptom-free in the absence of synthetic pharmaceutical opioids. Throughout this video series, we'll take a look at the nature of addiction with respect to opioids. We'll look at the biochemical pathway that leads from opioids to dopamine. We'll explore at least one genetic link that might explain why some people are a little more prone to addiction than others, and we'll look at the process of treatment and recovery with somebody who has an opioid use disorder. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.